And the last one is when you have six effective pairs around there. Actually, you can have a molecule that has seven effective pairs. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you about that in a second, but here's six effective pairs is pretty much the limit that you have to go. Now, with six effective pairs, uh, and by the way, here's a, a formula that's absolutely possible to make. PCl6 with a negative one charge. And even though the phosphorus doesn't really do its formal charge of zero here. This one is, is possible. Uh, it's not optimal, but it's possible. And what you're going to get is six CLs around that center. And when you count up, that's two, four, six, eight. Eight times the six chlorines here is going to be 48. But when you count up the number of valence electrons here, there's 48. That's what it would look like. And as a shape, you know what you can't get away from? You can't get away from the fact that every one of these atoms, which are which have four in the plane here, one up top and one down below, have to be 90 degrees away from each other. And so, with that as the, uh, as the name of the arrangement, you've got, now stay with me, one, two, three, four-sided type of pyramid up top and a four-sided pyramid down below. Four and four is eight, octahedral arrangement is what you have here, and for this molecule in particular, you just take the lone pairs off here and draw it like that, dotted lines here, wide, uh, wide bonds there, and you get yourself that octahedral shape. Now, I won't do all the other Lewis diagrams for this, but what I'm going to show you is that's an arrangement, right? It's a seed arrangement. What would happen if you actually had a lone pair here somewhere as an effective pair instead of a bond? Okay, well, where would you put it? Well, it doesn't matter, because everything's 90 degrees away from each other, so put the lone pair up there. And when you do that, well, what do you get? You actually get a four-sided pyramid here, right? But the base of that pyramid would be square. So it's called square pyramidal. Does that make sense? That's what it would be, square pyramidal. What if you had another lone pair in that shape? And then what you would actually do is take off the top, so you put a lone pair up top and down below. You wouldn't put them in the plane next to each other. They want to be, the lone pairs would definitely want to be as far away from each other as possible because they require the most space. Bang, one up top, one down below for lone pairs. And the name of that sh shape would be a square, but it's in a plane. So it would be called square planar. So those are the, uh, the, the names of the shapes, octahedral, square pyramidal, and square planar that you get out of an octahedral arrangement. And by the way, there, are, there is a molecule called, believe it or not, IF7 with a negative one charge. Oh, uh, what? I, wait a minute, a negative one charge? No, I don't think so. It's just IF7, because uh, that'd be 56 valence electrons. And what would you actually do? Um, you'd actually put five in the plane, one up top, and one down below, and that other one sticking out of the plane would give you not a, uh, a trigonal in the middle, but a pentagonal, and it would be a bipyramidal, and it would be called pentagonal bipyramidal. That's cool. Tell your teacher, hey, I can do IF7, pentagonal bipyramidal. That'll impress him or her. Well, I just want to help you out, too, with determining polarity. And, 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 and here's the thing about polarity. Remember, um, polarity is going to be, well, you look at the electronegativities and the differences between them and you make polar, you find out if there's polar or nonpolar bonds in a molecule and then you have to, have to look at the overall shape to, to see if it's actually going to be overall containing something called a dipole moment or not, polar or nonpolar overall. So if you had something like CF4 and all of these atoms here are equivalent, well everything's 109.5 degrees away from each other, very symmetrical that would be a nonpolar molecule. Okay, but when we have that pyramidal shape, remember, when it's still four effective pairs, pyramidal shapes are always, because the lines would be pointing this way, this way, and this way, um, or out, out, and out, depending on the uh, polarity of these uh, atoms here, maybe these are H's or F's or CL's or whatever, the point is this, those bond dipoles, we say, don't cancel out. So in a pyramidal shape, you never have anything that's nonpolar, it's always polar. Tetrahedrals, if everything's the same out here, that's going to be a nonpolar. If one of them's different than the other atoms here, it's polar. That is always going to be polar. 
A bent shape is always going to be polar. The dipoles or the, or the, the lines here do not cancel out. And so that's going to be a polar shape. Linear, if these two atoms are the same, it's nonpolar. But if they're the same, it's, uh, <laughs> if they're not the same, it's going to be a polar molecule. If they're the same, it's nonpolar. Now, for that three effective pairs, right, if they're all the same here, all separated by 120 degrees, that's nonpolar. And if you get a bent shape out of a, a, a trigonal planar shape, then that is going to be always polar, right? And by the way, once again, if that atom was all of a sudden one of the, these greeny ones here, and you look at that and somebody says to you, is that polar or nonpolar? Well, if this is different than these two, these bond dipoles here won't cancel properly, and that's polar. Okay, now, what if you have that five effective pairs right there? That's nonpolar. But when you get to that, that, oh, I'm sorry, that's actually six effective pairs. Well, let's do the five effective pairs first. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now, there's five effective pairs. One, two, three, four, uh, five. Uh, so that's going to be that trigonal bipyramidal arrangement, right? That right there is nonpolar if these are all equivalent, because that's a 120 degree bond angles all in the plane, one up top, one down below, everything cancels. That's nonpolar. Seesaw is always going to be a polar shape. The T shape that comes off of the, ne the next one there is always going to be a polar shape. But the linear might actually be a nonpolar shape if all three of these guys are the same, or even if the two of these guys are the same. That could be nonpolar. And then you get to that octahedral one, and that's going to be nonpolar. But that square pyramidal. If these are all the same here, all the bond, let's say all the bond dipoles point in. Well, in, 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 those all cancel, but this one points in and there's nothing to cancel going this way, and that's going to always be polar, and that more likely is going to be nonpolar. Just to give you an idea as to how to assess polarity with all these molecular shapes.